Hey everybody, welcome back to Crypto Events Announcements. My name is Eugene Ramarenko. I'm your Crypto MC and please welcome my today's very happy guest. His name is Robbie Schwertner. He's broad broadcasting from Vienna, Austria right now and he is the founder of CEO of Crypto Robbie and he also will be the distinguished speaker at the Chain Point Nighting Conference in Vyarivan Crypto Armenia, hosted by Vigena Rushanyan and Armenian Blockchain Association Noor team in October 14 and 15. Am I correct, Rabbi? And it's a great pleasure yes. to have you on interview. Long sentence, long introduction. Yes, very correct, Eugene. I will be in uh, Yerevan, uh, Armenia on 14 and 15 of October, and I'm really looking forward to attending that conference. Armenia in the Caucasus is a country where I have been many, many years ago with a, a relief project. It was after the earthquake, 1988. It was 10 years after the Austrian government um, financed some relief projects. So I'm coming back. I, in, I was there 2001 and I will come back now 2019. So I really see, hope to see a big change and it seems lots have been going on in Armenia. Yes. That's a great personal story. And for those who may be not familiar with you, uh, tell uh, us please briefly a big introduction who you are, what you do in the blockchain industry. Yes, um, my name is Robbie Schwertner, but I'm also known as Crypto Robbie. I created this brand. Actually, it's a figure I created. I wrote under this pseudonym for some time. Um, I used it as a pseudonym, so it was a kind of anonymous, but it became a bit famous, actually, in, um, especially on LinkedIn. So I used this pseudonym later and made a brand out of it. Uh, it's now a EU wide brand. And I used this actually. I um, do consultancy for blockchain projects for very small ones, so either blockchain startups or very large ones, super large enterprises. Actually, nothing in between these classical SME, they don't need blockchain for the moment. They shall be interested, but at the moment we have blockchain startups, they um, doing ICO or SEO or very large enterprises. And the interesting with the large ones is they are not looking for new business opportunities. They look where their business can be disrupted. So they are in a kind of fear that blockchain will uh, cut the business. So why did you decide to share your ideas and experience once again in uh, first in crypto Armenia, but not first time in Armenia also? And what topics and issues will you be specifically speaking about in Yerevan? Yeah. First of all, I'm very often speaker. I was last year in the British Parliament, House of Commons, at a TEDx talk. I was at maybe 30 conferences, Singapore, Shanghai, Moscow, Frankfurt, London, Paris, and more. Um, so this year I reduced it a bit, but last week, for instance, I was at the OECD Blockchain Forum in Paris. I was invited as a moderator for the corporate a partnership program of OECD and um, Friday, Thursday, last Friday, Thursday, I was in Davos, which is uh, the location in Switzerland where the annual World Economic Forum is held with many, many leaders coming there. So at the Davos Digital Forum I have been. And so I use these um, um, conferences to um, distribute, to work on the ideas of blockchain and to spread the idea of blockchain first. Second, I speak about projects uh, tomorrow, uh, day after tomorrow. I'm in Bratislava on a fintech conference about blockchain and insurance, blockchain and uh, how the blockchain could um, disrupt fintech and especially banks. So um, what I do in my work is I focus mainly on consultancy for real estate, energy and mobility. That's my focus. That's mainly the main projects, but there are also projects like RoboAdvise. I support a project like Islamic Banking on Blockchain. I support a project like Energy um, in the field of renewable energies. So I have quite a spectrum. The focus is always business development for uh, blockchain projects. And here we are at the very beginning because blockchain looks still like the internet in the late 90s. Yeah, totally. very totally. rough, totally. very, totally. very, yeah. and then so, yeah. So as an experienced business uh, blockchain insider, industry insider and a blockchain traveler, I will call you uh, the mm -hmm. same, what are the main trends in the industry you are observing right now? Yes, what we see is, first of all, first thing is 
what was so easy in 2017 until maybe February 2018, raising money for blockchain projects, raising money for startups with cryptocurrencies is getting really tough at the moment. I see good projects, excellent projects, uh, good quality projects, but they have difficulties to raise funds. And the reason is the market is still remembers market which has been hurt the market is vulnerable the market is very sensitive now very carefully investing many people lost money and so not new money is peering into the market second point second what i realize is regulators are more strict so we have just yesterday on sunday yesterday uh, 22nd of september the german government released the strategy on blockchain and they have five priorities in three of these five priorities they say we must regulate it needs more law it needs strict regulations we must supervise startups we must supervise currencies like libra coin and so on so not only that the market is depressed and going sideways you have regulators even um, introducing more rules that's another trend what i also see is that the third trend is large enterprises entering the scene like it's no surprise facebook creates a um, crypto money because when you have their text emails and it's the largest messaging service now from text emails or text messages to money messages it's a short way it's just to make it a bit more safe it's very logic that these large um, enterprises large messaging messaging service introduce their money so we have that we see that and we will more, see more regulators waking up now central banks are really waking up from the sleep and um, they see now very clear we have to do something the question is whether they have to do against such developments like the facebook libra coin or they develop it with uh, and I have been, as I told you, in Switzerland, it was a big discussion. Libra has the foundation based in Switzerland, and we'll see how regulators um, will deal with that new uh, cryptocurrency. Well, uh, the fact you are broadcasting now from Vienna, Austria, means one more important thing personally for me. As my friends now I am involved in Austrian economics. Of course, you know what yes. is Austrian economics. Yes. Karl Menger, Eugen von Bambavec. Ludwig von Mises, all these experienced and well-known scholars and Mises Institute in the United States and so on. Uh, my question personally for you, do you think that Austrian economics, I don't know, are you involved or not, is important as economic theory at all for economic understanding what's going on in the world and especially for understanding what money is and what Bitcoin is and could Bitcoin, for example, return humanity to the sound money as the gold standard is politically impossible today. Yes, what we see is um, that the Austrian economics, and I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not a macroeconomist, yeah, I cannot speak on the different theories, but when we have the Keynes uh, approach and we have um, Austrian economies that the, we call it Wiener Schule, which means Viennese school of economics, yeah, of course it's quite famous, what I see is that still very interesting is, first of all, that sometimes uh, Bitcoin, for instance, is criticized of something which other currencies uh, still have. Bitcoin is criticized for having a limited supply of funds, 21 million uh, coins. But when you look at other currencies like the euro, it has also a limited supply. The theory of money, so the, the limits, for instance, the mechanics of currencies are quite similar. That's that's first point. So also Bitcoin is criticized, yeah, we have only limited supply. Yes, but that's important to create value. So the, sometimes these principles are forgotten when it comes to cryptocurrencies, these macroeconomic principles, the, the theory of money, so that you have a volume and price and, and also the this, this famous equation on money, which applies to every currency sometimes is also forgotten by startups. They think they can print money, more and more cryptocurrency, and they will be rich. Yes, we know from Venezuela, you will be rich, you will be millionaire, but unfortunately, this fund doesn't have any value. You, can, you need millions to buy bread. And maybe from talking to a uh, um, you based in Belarus, maybe this is also something you know, because the Belarusian ruble is, not some, is also sometimes we said many, many zeros. 
it, we have this um, underlying uh, theory which still applies, which is forgotten, interestingly, from the industry. But also these cryptocurrencies are sometimes criticized and that's unjustified. That's, that, that's the main principle. Well, thanks for your um, brilliant opinion. And the second question I want to ask you, I always try to ask speakers from different countries about the crypto shapes crypto sites of their countries. You are from Austria. We don't hear so mm. much about crypto Austria. We hear about Switzerland, Singapore, Hong Kong, yeah. and so on. But what is crypto Austria? Could you please explain us viewers? I started for Austria in 2016 with an Excel sheet. I was interested, who is dealing in Austria with cryptocurrencies, with blockchain and so on. So it was an Excel sheet. Finally, I did one of these, you know, I call it a logo, logo graveyard, you know, where you put all these logos and, uh, on a landscape and you call it now uh, blockchain landscape. So I started creating the Austrian blockchain landscape. And recently, a very large bank called me and said, asked, Hey, Robbie, we would be very, actually, they said, Mr. Schwerten, we would be very interested to be on that landscape, on, on, to be on that blockchain landscape. So I created this blockchain landscape. I update this. This is widely used. It's free of charge. It's a free service to everybody to be put there, but also, and you can find it by um, typing cryptorobby.blog slash Austria. So you find it when you, um, you find that uh, landscape. And we have at the moment 140 organizations, companies registered there. So that's not very much. We have a very active companies. For instance, I would just to mention some Riddle and Code is a northern ICO. It's a, a coding company. They did just recently for Daimler-Benz, the um, Aust um, German car manufacturer, a car wallet. Yeah, they, they coded a car wallet. We have a comp, Bitpanda is a large exchange, bitpanda.com. It's one of the largest European exchange. They offer a lot of different services. We have Acarion, which is a cheap DPR company. We have some trading companies, of course, miners. But recently we saw some startups going bankrupt. Uh, that's also a, a, a famous miner, Hydro Miner, for instance. It was kind of ecological mining. They went bankrupt. Another Finnock um, service provider went bankrupt. Some had to uh, cancel the ICOs. They say postpone the ICOs. Mm, yeah, <laughs> it's a nice way to express it. We see now also on this landscape, this Austrian um, Post, which is the mailing company, is the partly governmental. They introduced a crypto stamp. So you find it crypto.post.at. You find the 150,000 of these crypto stamps. It's a stamp for which we could use for mail, but it's also on Ethereum. It was sold out within days. So first of all, the, uh, the, the, the collectors of stamps, they loved that. And also the crypto world loved it. So it's a good business, obviously. And they did it right. So just to give you an overview of there. Yeah. Well, that's the great story. And now we know a bit more about crypto. Austria, thanks for your storytelling. And finally, let's go back to crypto Armenia. We need to explore that country. Mm -hmm. Whom do you recommend to visit Chamber United Conference in Yerevan? What type of person will mostly benefit from attending these conference? Let me first talk about Austria still, just to, 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 tell, me, uh, to tell you why I go to Armenia. In Austria, when I want to have a smart contract coded for Ethereum, there are maybe 20 coders who are able to code properly in Austria. Yeah, 20, not 20,000. 20 coders where I would say they could really code something on Ethereum. An ERC token, something which, which later can really uh, use for being value transferred. So what we lack here is good coders. They are, who are people who understand blockchain, who know how it works. So one reason is I go to that area because Armenia has still strong ties with Russia, strong ties with Belarus and post-Soviet Union countries. Um, so Armenia and Armenia itself has lots to offer in terms of coding. They have excellent coders, but they don't have the companies. They don't have the industries in such large extent in that region. So to me, it's very important to, um, and that's also I recommend projects, uh, larger projects, also from companies, companies who are interested in uh, going into blockchain to develop um, cases, use cases and so on, to go there and meet, um, meet coders personally and meet people on the ground. Second is idea exchange. 
I want to hear different ideas. For instance, the famous Borchomi um, um, water, yeah, it's it's a it's a, a Georgian brand. They have they did it's it's the neighboring country in Georgia. They have a blockchain-based solution to follow up that is really coming from Borchomi that water, not some something else. The refill in Armenia, a similar uh, projects going on. So they have quite quite interesting small projects too. Sometimes big but excellent coders, that's where we, and mathem mathematics was always very important in these countries. It was, it was taught and you have excellent experts. So that's, that's what I'm looking for. And of course, meeting people and seeing the Mount Ararat, which is so famous, yeah, just from this Yerevan, this big, old, very famous city, it's historically the, it's also uh, the, the uh, center of the Christianity, the oldest Christian uh, communities there. So it's a cultural experience too. It's excellent. I really appreciate it. You are so experienced in geography, history, culture, maybe in other sciences. That's great. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to meet personally this passionate guy, Crypto Rabbi, the founder and creator of Crypto Austria, and explore the Crypto Armenia, and if you have never been in Armenia, please attend the Chainpoint 19 conference in Yerevan in October 14 and 15, see link below, and use your promo code Romanenko at CP19 for your 20% discount. It's also written below. By the way, visit CryptoMC.com and find a list of another crypto events. We can, by the way, meet also with you in this yes. fall 2019. And subscribe my Facebook page and YouTube channel for the next week's interview. Robbie Schwartner from Vienna, Austria, the father and CEO of Crypto Robbie and the creator of Crypto Austria, the king of Crypto Austria. I will call <laughs> that you, if you let me. So, and you, Jerome, Anka, what Not are a you? king, but still, maybe, maybe, uh, yeah. Crypto Robbie is a figure, is a character. Sometimes I cooperate with him. It's a, it's a character I created, and he is there to explain blockchain to the world and also look for the projects which have an added value to people and added value and that's what i also call it return on society i will also speak about that see you in armenia go there it's worth the visit uh, trip is very cheap flights are really not so expensive i spent 200 euro to from us from vienna to go to yerevan the hotel is not expensive food is excellent and there's lot of uh, european and uh, asian experts meeting there in the middle in Thank you very much, Eugene. Thank you for the interview. See you in Crypto Armenia, guys. Bye bye. Yes, I'm really looking forward. Ciao.